All right, so what's up, everybody? Um, my name is Elijah Lamb. If you've never been to TikTok Bible study, it's so awesome to have you here. You guys are the best. And um, yeah, so tonight we're looking at Revelation chapter 2, verses 8 through 11. So I'm going to go ahead and read that. Elijah Lamb is a 17 year old preacher, but he doesn't share the gospel from a typical pulpit. How come when these people say they believe Jesus and then a month later they're back on, they're back doing drugs, they're back having sex, they're back doing all these different things because they don't understand the principle that we desire God and not simply what he can give us and that includes eternity. All this stuff on the wall, a lot of this is notes that I've received over time. This one's from my dad. He basically was just telling me um, he was proud of me and that he saw that God was doing great things through me. Some of my family is really just as me. Uh, my dad is an elder at my church. Um, my mom, her life radically changed. She reads the Bible now more than anyone I know. So I grew up going to church. Um, but like most people, I was, I was very nominal. Like it was, I attend church on Sundays, but uh, Jesus was never real to me. Uh, I definitely was not always a preacher. I definitely, this was not the lifestyle I was living. Um, but I went with my grandparents on a mission trip in Mexico and my life just totally changed there. Lamb takes a more modern spin on educating young Christians and potential converts through TikTok. Hi, I'm Elijah, and I'm today I'm here to be controversial. Bro, Jesus didn't die so you could try and handle your sin on your own. Marriage. He started posting Christian apologetic videos on his TikTok last summer, with some reaching millions of views. I'm just basically telling God the guy I want to preach, but I don't have anywhere to do it. And then boom. I could loop on TikTok and I was like, okay, here's an opportunity for me to do this, for me to preach every week. Um, and so I sort of have my own online congregation and it's, it's the size of like a nice church. Child preachers aren't new. Pint-sized evangelists have been thriving in America since the 1920s. Christ is our guide and comforter who comforts us in all our trials. One of the earliest popular child evangelists was 14-year-old Aldine Utley, who reportedly drew a crowd of 10,000 at Madison Square Garden in 1926. When it comes to spiritual maturity and serving the Lord, do not let your age be an excuse. But Christianity is on a decline in the U.S. According to Pew, 65% of American adults describe themselves as Christians, down by a dozen percentage points over a decade, while folks who identify as religiously unaffiliated went up by 17% in a decade. Gen Z in particular is twice as likely to identify as atheist compared to the rest of the country, being labeled the post-Christian generation. Daily bread and forgive us our sins, for we ourselves forgive everyone who is indebted to us. For Lamb, focusing on TikTok, an app where 60% of the user base is made up of Gen Z, seems like a promising strategy to attract converts. Well, the overall goal of, of what I'm doing with TikTok is to reach both Christians and non-Christians, right? So I want to, um, especially kids my age who don't take the gospel or the Bible or the church, any of that stuff seriously, to show them that they should. I mean, the Bible tells us time and time again to love God. How can you love him if you don't know him? Lamb isn't alone on his crusade to spread Christian teachings on TikTok. Hashtag Jesus has been viewed more than 7 billion times, while hashtag Christian and hashtag Christian TikTok boast over 6 billion and nearly 480 million views, respectively. I think a lot of like pastors today and, and stuff like that and church leaders just don't know how to reach my generation. Um, I don't think that's their fault, but I think I have a unique influence and platform as a member of the generation where I, I sort of have their respect immediately um, as opposed to an adult. Lamb's banking on Gen Z's rediscovery of the gospel by turning his TikTok game into a profitable job. He sold over $20,000 in Christian-themed t-shirts and hoodies just this year. I fear God, homie. It's a reference to a few uh, Bible verses. One of them is Proverbs 1-7, which basically says the beginning of wisdom is the fear of the Lord. I think it was around $40, $40. And um, so they sold pretty well. I like to call it ministry because like it's full-time. That's, that's my job. Like it, it literally is my job. If I wasn't big on TikTok, I would still be working at a sandwich place. And I would hate it. It was, it was awful. This is, I'm definitely much happier doing this. Lamb admits that preaching behind the safety of a screen isn't the same as preaching in person. Street preaching definitely requires a little bit more boldness and be willing to, to receive hatred from people that you're talking to. And so um, you receive that to some extent in social media, but it's really easy to just not read the comments. You sow bloodshed in the womb, you will reap it in the streets. Brandon is a guy I met through social media. He's a street preacher, um, which is super awesome. Um, I love his, his charisma and just the, for the way he's so bold and so really stoked to meet up with him. Never street preached before. I'm scared. <laughs> it's, I, I feel like it's going to be intimidating. 
Um, we'll find out tomorrow. What's up, dude? Brandon and Valiant have been traveling street preachers for three years, going from churches to colleges, teaching younger preachers like Lamb the craft of street preaching. Finally good to meet you. You ready? <laughs> yes. Nervous. Yeah, it's gonna be crazy. It's gonna be a good day of ministry. You can just chill, man. Just like talk to people one-on-one. -on -one. If there's a big crowd that forms around you, just answer questions. They're gonna be asking a bunch of weird questions and, and uh, trying to provoke you to answer wrongly, but just answer like Christ and, and uh, reason with them. Dude, you ready to get over there? I'm All so right, excited. Right, let's do this. You want one of these? What is it? It's about abortion. No, you don't want me to talk about it? Do you guys want to short, sit down and have a short conversation? Do you want to engage in the conversation with us? You're good, okay. Hey, Elijah, we have our first person that wants to talk, and it's your first time talking. She knows that, so um, basically, what is your stance on abortion itself? Um, I, I guess I'm pro-life up until certain. At the time where the child can feel pain or when the child uh, his nerves are working or when that child can remember, is that what you're saying? Yeah, like a, a conscious being. Okay, so then what's the difference? What draws the distinction between, you know, an infant in its first year between a, a child and the womb? Honestly, like, abortion for me is like a really, like, a, like a slippery slope yeah. topic. You guys see it as murder, but like nobody would be advocating for it if everyone saw it as murder. Like, you're stopping the potential growth of a human being. Like, an acorn isn't an oak tree, you know what I yeah. mean? Like, they're two completely different things. Just because of the age difference, we're allowed to treat them like they're not a human being. So getting back to that one question, when, do that, I think life, when does it begin? I think it's hard to say. I definitely do not think it's at the time of conception. Okay. I have five minutes to get and to so class. And so I, I would charge you to um, think about these things. disagree. I will think about okay. this. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you, Lydia. Guys. God bless you. And I will be praying for you. I think Elijah did really, really well for his first time out here. We're not gonna have them fully agree with us in a 15 minute conversation. And that's not the goal. The goal is to prick their conscience on the issue of sin and uh, get them to the gospel. So there are young people leaving the church. Why? Because they're bored to tears of church. But here we have a young guy coming out here for the first time. A lot of these young people are out here because guess what? It is exciting. Lamb says he hasn't street preached since and doesn't have plans to street preach again. Our goal can never be to please culture. We absolutely cannot change the eternal truths that are given to us by the Father for the sake of appeasing those who hate us. People don't know, but like there are young people following Christ, even if it seems like my generation is lost. Um, I think that within the next 15, 20 years, America will return to the church in a way that it's never, it's never witnessed before. What do you guys get asked most? Uh, it always starts off with abortion, but then it spaces out to random subjects. One question we do get asked that's kind of confusing. You know, what if a lady is about to give birth, but that baby is going to kill the woman? Should we stay to our convictions and not abort that baby and let that woman die? Or should we do an emergency abortion and save that woman, but also kill the child? How would you answer that question? Dude, that, that's an ethical dilemma. Yeah. I, uh, I normally would alter like saying to save the woman. Uh -huh. But I know women who have like been in that situation and been like, no, I'm gonna go through with it yeah. and have the kid because they want their kid to live. Yeah. I don't know, that's like, that's like a tough decision. I, I don't know how I would answer that. But the thing is, you wanna bring scripture into first. So you say, you know, the Lord says, thou shalt not murder. So we're always gonna try to stick to that as much as possible. And then you give them the dilemma that, hey, guess what? If we're in an emergency, do you do something that takes 15 to 20 minutes or something that could take possibly four to eight hours? Here's another question um, that we get all the time is, oh, Jesus never said anything about homosexuality. How would you answer that? Well, I know it's in the epistles, like uh -huh. it's mentioned there, and it's mentioned in the Old Testament, but yeah. But Jesus I, never said nothing about it. Jesus never said anything about rape, pedophilia, or robbing banks. Right. Are those things wrong? Absolutely, they're disgusting and horrible. And then you would say, well, guess what? The Bible overall does communicate homosexuality to be a sin. Just because Jesus didn't specifically say anything about it doesn't make it right. And so you easily take the base of their question and use it against them, but also reason with them, let them learn. So we'll stay right here and try to pass out tracks. Imagine seeing an old friend, how you would react when you see an old friend. Just like smile at them and be like, hey, do you get one of these? Smile big and give it to them. They'll take them every time. Me and Valiant have traveled for two years. Uh, now we go anywhere we can. So when we're in a city uh, like, let's say, Wichita, we're at the church speaking, we're talking with the young people. We're trying to get them to come out to the campus with us, we're trying to get them to come out to evangelize with us and basically teaching them how to do what we do. And uh, that's the goal is to duplicate ourselves in different cities. <laughs> you nervous? Yeah, this is like that. It's weird, dude, yeah. I don't know. I was like, are you going to be in Florida at any point preaching? Yeah. Because I've always wanted to do it. And he said, yeah. 
Every time someone gives me angry eyes, my heart breaks. Yeah. For one. Woohoo! Get out of here. This is my territory now. All right, I'll come over here <laughs> and we'll switch. <laughs> and I truly believe them without Christ or in their sin are going to hell. It is hateful for me not to be here to minister to them. It's awesome to see young people that are blessed with a, a huge platform that can minister the gospel in different ways. I agree with you. You good? You agree with me? Hey, God bless you. He's like, I agree with you. Yeah. At our age, you have five or ten years of big influence on the young people, the youth of America. After that, you're just old guys just talking about Christ. Um, so at this age, we connect with them. So we just, we're trying to get the most out of these next few years. Yeah. This one is basically to engage conversation about abortion and the sin of abortion, to get into gospel conversations. So, um, this is Dr. Martin Luther King. I had a dream that one day the nation will rise up and live out true meaning of its creed, that all our men are created equal. It talks about when life begins, and that's at conception, not at any other point in time. I would question you in, in thinking about that majority thing, because every time in history has had its Holocaust, where people are viewed as dogs or people is viewed as something else so there where we can kill them. There was times in American history where the majority was that black people are not human beings or they viewed them as this and therefore we can enslave them. Do you believe in an objective sense of right and wrong? Like is there right and is there wrong? Norms. A culture's concept of right and wrong changes, but the Bible doesn't, right? Like it stayed the same for, you know, since the Ten Commandments and, and through the New Testament through Jesus' teaching. I just don't think that morality comes from just that book. I think somebody wrote that book and somebody was like, oh, you know what, I probably shouldn't like take other people's lives. That's kind of like a shitty thing to do. Like you said somebody wrote the Bible. I know you got to go in a little bit. Imagine this. Mm -hmm. Somehow we grab all of those books that have been written about God through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit and none of them contradict on God's character. None of them contradict on anything there. Okay. Well, I, well, I know you got to go. There. And we're we'll praying for you. You're all, doing out here. all right, thank you. It's honestly common sense you shouldn't kill a human life. You don't have to be a Christian to know that, you know? We've met atheists before that are part of life. They just make excuses for sin, you know? Uh, they want to have sex outside, outside marriage. I uh, think it's a recreational thing when sex is made for uh, the marriage bed. It's not made for um, to have fun with, you know? Have you guys ever had sex? Before I was a Christian, yeah. No, I have not. <laughs> I am still a virgin. Happy virgin. Happy virgin. Proud of Virginia rocks. <laughs>